So in the last video, we learned how to install Scrappy on your computer. Doesn't matter whether you're using Windows, Linux or Mac. And after that, we even created a project of Scrappy called Word Tutorial. Now, if you haven't created this project yet and you have just stumbled upon this video from somewhere, what you can do is you can just open up this terminal. Now, if you're not using PyCharm, if you're using something like Sublime Text, then you can just open up the command prompt or even a terminal if you're using Linux or Mac. After you have gone inside your virtual environment, and if you don't have virtual environment, I'll highly recommend going back to the previous videos and seeing how I create this virtual environment. But anyways, after you have gone inside this virtual environment, what you can do is you can just write Scrappy, and then you can just write Start Project, and then just write down the name of the project. So in our case, because we are going to be scrapping a quote website, that is why we have called it as quote tutorial. So again, also, if you want to follow along, you can just write quote tutorial and just press enter. I'm not going to do it because I've already created this project structure. But anyways, after you have created this project, you must have this kind of folder structure inside your sublime text or PyCharm. So just to make sure that you don't get intimidated by all of these files over here, I'm going to go through them one by one, but I'm not going to go into them in a lot of depth because we are going to be covering each of these files in a lot more deeper way in future videos. But for this video, let's just start with this settings.py file. Actually, even before that, let's just go from the top. So we have a scrappy tutorial folder and this is our virtual environment folder. And inside that we have our project folder that is the quote tutorial folder that we just created. And just the Scrappy project has also created another folder inside that same project folder, which is also known as Code Tutorial. And then inside that we have this folder called as spiders. Now, if you don't remember, spider is basically a Python program that scrapes other websites. So we are going to be writing our Python code inside the spiders folder. Now there are two init files or initialization files that you don't need to worry about. Scrappy just uses them for its purposes. You don't need to worry about them and mostly they are just empty. But in this init file, it's written that you can just put in your spiders of your Scrappy project inside this spiders folder. Now after that, we have these four files that are really important. Let's just start with settings.py file. So if we open it up and we scroll to the top, you will be able to see that the first line is bot underscore name equals to quote tutorial. Now quote tutorial is just the name of our project. And why is it calling it a bot? Because we are creating a web scraper here, web crawler over here. Why is it calling a bot? So if you don't know, bot is basically anything that automates the writing of code or automate some kind of action on the internet or on a website. And because we are automating the action of web scraping or crawling a website, that is why our crawler can also be named as a bot or can also be called as a bot. That is why in our settings.py file, it says bot name equals to quote tutorial. After that, it has a couple of modules which you don't need to worry about. And after that, there is this user agent. So what is a user agent? Whenever you visit a website, for example, if you visit google.com, then you need to identify yourself as to who you are. So who is the person basically sending a request? So what Google does it, it asks the browser that you are using, hey, who the heck are you exactly? So a browser sometimes sends a request to the Google saying that, hey, I'm just a Mozilla Firefox browser. And if you are web scraping yourself, you can be a little bit more responsible and you can identify yourself by writing in your domain name, but you don't have to do that. In the future videos, you'll also be seeing that we'll be, uh, so a lot of website put a lot of restrictions on web scraping. So in the future, you'll be also seeing us bypassing those restrictions using this user agent over here. But for us right now, it doesn't really matter. Now I'm not going to go into this robots text file because I've already gone into it in a little bit of more depth. So you can just check out the previous video. I think it was the third or fourth video that I did where we go into what is this robots.txt file. Now the next thing that we need to know in our settings.py file is this term of concurrent requests. So whenever you make a lot of requests at the same time, then that is known as concurrent requests. Now just to reel it back a little bit, if you don't know what a request is, it is basically asking a website to open up. So for example, if you go to google.com and press enter, basically our browser is sending a request to Google server and asking the Google server to open up. So similarly, we are going to be using our Python program to request a website to open up so that we can scrap it. Now, whenever we ask the website to open up once, we can get the data of that website once. 
but because we are going to be scrapping a lot of data that is why we can't just use one request that is why we are going to be sending a lot of requests at the same time and in our case we are going to be sending the request at 16 rate per time so we are not going to be using the 32 one over here we are going to be using the default one that is the 16 now you must be thinking that hey why are we keeping the number of concurrent requests to 16 and because we have a huge of amount of data that we want to scrap and we want the data scrapping to be done really really quickly why don't we just increase this number from 16 to maybe something like 1000 you know uh, the reason that you don't do that because it causes a lot of overload to the server now 32 requests at every second is actually fine but a thousand is actually a little bit too much imagine that somebody is hitting your website and sending a request every second like thousands of times then this can cause a lot of overload to the server and the website and in some cases if the website is small the website can also go down so that is why you want to keep this number to a very uh, small number maybe 32 is fine but you know a thousand number is not fine now if you go come down it has a lot of uh, the same thing and if we come down a little bit more you'll be able to see it doesn't have a lot of things that we are interested in right now it has this term called auto throttle and we are going to be going into it a little bit it basically also helps to make sure that a website that we are scrapping does not get overloaded so the next file that we are going to be looking into is actually this file called items.py and if you look into it it has this class of code tutorial item that has been automatically created for us and it says define the fields for your item here so what are the fields that it requires so if we go to a website like uh, course.toscrape.com and this is a website that we are going to be scraping in this first spider that we are creating and you can just scrap this website freely it has been actually created by scrappy to make sure that we can learn how to do web scraping so this is a website where it has a lot of quotes and it has author of those quotes and it has tags of those quotes so the first item that we can see over here is a quote item the second item that we can see over here is an author item and the third item that we can see over here is a tags item so this one element has actually three items the first item is a quote then the author and then the tags so whenever we are scrapping a website it always has a particular field of items so the this element over here has three items but if we open up a website like amazon you'll be able to see that it has different items for example the product name the product price the product category the product description and stuff like that so whenever we are scrapping a project it's a good idea and actually it's a good practice to define your items over here in this items.py file so if we are going to be looking into this file a little bit more in the next video but for right now just understand that whenever we need to define a field it goes into items.py so for example over here it has said name equals to scrappy dot field and if we want to scrap for example a quote we can call it quote equals to scrappy dot field and uh, so this is it for items.py file so let's look into this file called pipelines.py so in a nutshell what happens is that after scrapping the data of this quote website we want it to store somewhere so for example that data can be stored in a json file or maybe a sql file or sql database or maybe a mongodb database so this is done by using this pipelines.py file so every code that goes inside this pipelines.py file make sure that your web scraped data or your scraped data is handled properly and it goes to where you intend it to go after that we have this file called middlewares.py file so what this does is when you are sending a request to a website you can add some stuff to that request so for example if we are going to be learning about user agents and we are going to be adding proxies to a request proxy is basically div using different ip addresses to bypass restrictions of web scraping on a website and that is known as a proxy so whenever we are going to be adding proxy to a request we are going to be doing it through a middleware and whenever a website sends a response back we can also handle that response so for example if we extract this uh, quote from this website and if we want to do something with this quote then we can use middleware to do something with that quote and then we can obviously send it to this pipelines.py file where we can store it inside some kind of database 
So guys, this is pretty much it for this video. In this video, we learned about this project structure and hopefully now you're a little bit more comfortable with seeing all of these four files over here. In the next video, we are going to be creating our first spider, our first Python program inside this spiders folder. So I'll see you over there.